Hey guys, John Biggs with TechCrunch here. I'm very lucky to be here with Jim Gaffigan. You're announcing something pretty cool. Uh, somebody did it before, but you're doing it better. Is that right? Well, no, I, I don't know if it's better. It's, it's, uh, it's building off of what uh, Louis C.K. did. Mm -hmm. I'm offering my uh, next stand-up special uh, on my website for $5. And how I'm doing it different is a dollar of that will go to the Woodruff, uh, Bob Woodruff Foundation, which helps uh, wounded veterans and their families. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll see. Now I'm gonna assume the viewers are familiar with your, with your work. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff in there. The question is why are, why are comedians doing this? And is this, is this sort of an extension of how you work normally? Is, this, is there something special about this medium that allows you to do this sort of thing? Well, I think, you know, I can't really, uh, I can only speak to my personal experience in talking about comedians because uh, the music industry is, is complex. And, um, but I think that comedians have a, a rich history of selling things on their own. I mean, for, uh, you know, like a decade or so, uh, comedians after shows have been selling their wares, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, their CDs or their DVDs. Uh, trying to scrap on by, and I think that comedy is probably different from uh, music in that um, y you know people hear songs on the radio. You rarely, outside of satellite, you rarely hear mm -hmm. stand up on the radio. So maybe you know there's obvious differences, but um, but people have done this before. But uh, I think that Louis really established something uh, unique. And um, he made it very clear that uh, I think he established a, a certain level of honesty, which I think is uh, the currency of the internet mm -hmm. today. So we're talking about Louis C.K. He announced he was selling his stand-up. Uh, it was like live at the Beacon Theater, I yeah. think it was, for a few dollars. It, and I, it basically took down the internet for a couple of days. Do you, do you expect to do the... Uh... Well, I don't know. I mean, Louis... Uh, you know, on one of the... He's the writer and the director of the most critically acclaimed show right now. So, but I do think that, um, you know, I hopefully I'll make my money back. <laughs> and uh, and I do think that some of it is my approach is I would, I looked at a lot of different models, but I wanted to do something that would appeal to me as a consumer. I, uh, I know that if something was, you know, uh, a, a pretty low price, that I would be more likely to buy it. Mm -hmm. And if I felt like, the money was going to the creator, and um, and a portion of it was going to a, a you know a noble charity. I would be all over it. So I kind of crafted it in a way that it would appeal to me because okay. I'm self-centered. So in terms <laughs> in terms of uh, distribution, so your previous stuff has been it goes through the same it goes through the same channels. I guess music would go through. Right. You could essentially say that. Yeah. But this is an entirely new method. Uh, what did you have to build, and in, in, I guess in the back end, who did you have to talk to to get this sort of thing put together? And I guess, what are the steps, I suppose, if, if you have an up-and-coming comedian who wants to try this? Well, I think that uh, there, there's a couple elements that are um, big issues, I suppose. One is, without the corporate advertising, how will people find out about it? And two, I think that for people to purchase it, they probably have to have some knowledge of your past work. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm I, I'm going about this um, in the manner that uh, I've worked on it. You know, I do everything with my uh, wife Jeannie, who's also my co-writer, and she produces my stuff. And we've been talking about this for three months and looking at different ideas, um, uh, some of which were you know, really outside the box and some of, you know, I was for a while, I was thinking, it's like, how can I offer this free? Mm -hmm. um, but I keep coming back to uh, what Louis ended up doing and also, uh, which is a modification probably on what uh, Nine Inch Nails and, and uh, Radiohead did. But, um, you know, the steps were very much, you know, you know, people were approaching me with different types of offers. I was pitching different ideas through um, some really innovative people that I was I got connected to, and then it just came back to um, gut um, mm -hmm. and and the belief that if you're if you're honest and there's an absence of uh, 
a corporate fingerprint on something, I think people will be um, less likely to steal. And then if you add in an element where if they're stealing, they're stealing from a wounded veteran. Yeah, exactly. That makes so, them pretty <laughs> horrible people. So it's basically, it's, it's, it's basically I mean, a one-on-one -on -one interaction here. Yeah, I mean, I also wanted to... Nobody uh, wants to steal from you. Right. Well, I also wanted to do something, uh, you know, being a parent, we were talking about that. Mm -hmm. You want to do something that maybe has, uh, you know, that has some value to society. So it's it's not just uh, that, you know, trying to dissuade uh, theft or piracy. It was also, I mean, I, you know, I hope that... Uh, when my children look at this, they're like, well, at least dad, you know, he might have been grumpy, but at least he was doing <laughs> something right. I mean, as a parent, you know, sure, you, sure, you have sure. to think in this kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was interesting, you said something about Twitter that you say it's a little more cordial. I mean, I, I deal with commenters who basically just want to destroy my family every day. So yeah. how, 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 how are you saying in terms of getting the word out, you're just finding Twitter's a little bit funner? I think, I think Twitter really inspired... Um, some of my confidence surrounding this. Um, I mean, obviously I've done the MySpace thing and the Facebook thing, but I feel as though Twitter, there's, you know, ironically because it's you're just posting things, but I feel there's uh, a discourse, a conversation occurring, and there's some, you know, there, the, the, there's the brevity of it. You know, my wife had said that Twitter is just like getting texts from cool friends. Mm -hmm. And, um, but as we, you know, I've gotten into Twitter a lot the past six months, and I really kind of got a sense that, um, you know, uh, people were understanding me and I was understanding them based on replies. I love the fact that you can be sarcastic. It's the only <laughs> place on the internet you can be sarcastic. And so that's why I wanted to announce on Twitter, because if I'm gonna break even, I'm going to need <laughs> my Twitter followers <laughs> to do this. And I think sure. that I've uh, I've hopefully established a relationship with them. Do you think this will drive you guys into poverty? Well, not poverty. I mean, I, I, I have four kids, so I'm, <laughs> I'm close to poverty anyway. No, I'm very blessed. I, okay. I have a, you know, I tour doing stand-up, and uh, I'm very lucky. But this is, um, this is not something that... Uh, it's a calculation. Sure. I, I think that, uh, but I think, uh, you know, I keep talking about gut, but I think that this, there's a moment in time, and I think that the moment is now. I don't know what it's going to be like in six months. Now, we were talking a little earlier about a lot of this idea came from issues of censorship that you had with some of your previous work. Now, what's what's going yeah. on there? Yeah, I know it's, you know, I'm a very clean family-friendly sure. kind of comedian, but the irony is uh, some of um, making me look at other platforms and other uh, ways of dealing with um, my special was inspired by, you know, I had done two benefits, which uh, also inspired me to add a charity element to my $5 thing. At one of these benefits, um, it was taped for to air and uh, there were great comedians on there, and uh, and you know these comedians were you know some of them were saying some really mm -hmm. filthy stuff, and uh, the great irony is that I was ha I got conversations about censorship like <laughs> we got to lose this joke, and I was like wait a minute you realize there was someone singing from their you know from their crotch, and you're dealing because they can bleep out that, sure. but. Because I talk about specific brands, sure. and those brands might be major advertisers, then I'm put in a position where they're like, "Hey, can you do that? Uh, get rid of that?" Because the rich guy that's sure that's con funding this whole thing, uh, our advertiser doesn't wouldn't want you to make fun of them, and so it was some of that censorship. So I was encountering after that the reality that some of uh, this special might be, I might have to deal with censorship mm -hmm. and not because of uh, language or anything like that or, but because I was dealing with corporate names and. So you're allowed to, you're allowed to curse as much as you want, but you can't talk about. Yeah, they can burger that King. out, you right. know, but a brand name can frighten, you know, networks in this age where advertisers, but you know, with it, you know, you deal with some of that even when you do a late night show 
But the the charity element was um, something, you know, the night before, I mean, obviously the uh, Night of Too Many Stars was an autism one, and I considered that, and I considered a, a couple other ones, but the, the Stand Up for Heroes uh, is when I got connected to the Woodruff Foundation, Bob and Lee Woodruff, and it's, it you know, I saw the, the fact that the, they were solution driven. They were, uh, you know, here's an issue that's confronting uh, veterans and veteran families, and we're just going to provide solutions. Uh, they're apolitical. They're, it's you know whether you support the war or not. They're just kind of fulfilling a need, mm -hmm. which uh, was really compelling to me. You know, I've been to uh, Walter Reed Hospital, and I've also. Um, you know, the day before I did that benefit, I was on the subway and uh, some guy started talking to me and he kind of revealed that he was, you know, like an A student prior to going to Iraq and then uh, now he was doubtful that he was going to go to college. And this is like over the span of, you know, going from like Spring Street to 42nd mm -hmm. Street, he gave me this information just in conversation. And uh, so it's kind of... Uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, obviously there's so many charities to work with, but I feel like there's been a lot of moments where it's been kind of, uh, you know, tilting me towards what the Woodruff Foundation is doing.